Hey there, YouTubers. Well, have you ever come across a, a port in a wall plate, like in a business or a home, and it was supersized, like way too big to be your typical telephone port, if you even know what that is, if you're as old as I am, perhaps. Uh, well, essentially what that is, it's a Ethernet port. And so what exactly is that? Well, I'm Don from True Cable, and I'm going to walk you through understanding Ethernet ports and what you need to know. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so the first point we're gonna be covering, what exactly is an Ethernet port? Well, uh, they come in many, I guess, forms and variations. The two biggest ones are like a wall jack. Uh, another form or variation would be a live port, for example, on a switch or perhaps the back of a computer. And what it's for is it's designed to facilitate hardwired networking, that being using Ethernet patch cable or solid copper permanent link cable, like in a structured cabling system, or SCS, which stands for Structured Cabling System. And essentially, it allows your network to communicate one device to another, your computer to a printer, your uh, router, your ability to get onto the internet. All of those things uh, need to connect up somehow. And maybe up till now, uh, you've been used to using uh, Wi-Fi, uh, which is another way of connecting to your network. Well, the old traditional tried and true way is in fact Ethernet. So that's gonna get into the second part of our discussion, which is... Why would you need to use an Ethernet port? Well, the need is obvious in, in, in that uh, if you don't have Wi-Fi in your device. Uh, for example, you need to connect your switch to your router. Let's say you have a home router and you want to make it uh, so that you have more ports. Well, then you have to leverage the Ethernet ports that are found to connect one device, for example, to another so that you can then make the final connection to, for example, your little computer here. But uh, is there an advantage to using Ethernet? And the answer is yes. Ethernet networking is extremely reliable. And so uh, it's not susceptible, nearly as susceptible to wi uh, interference like Wi-Fi is. Wi-Fi is affected by range and speed, uh, ambient, uh, uh, ambient interference in the environment. It could be from a radio station. It could be from any number of things. Uh, just the very structure uh, and, and the technology being used. You run into compatibility problems with Wi-Fi as well because there's always new protocols being developed and you've got certain manufacturers that kind of zig when others are zagging and it's all for competitive edge. The problem is though is it causes a lot of interoperability problems. Well, if you go back to the old tried and true Ethernet cable, you're not going to have that issue anymore because it's an extremely well understood uh, networking technology that it's gonna give you the absolute most bulletproof reliable connection, assuming your cabling system is installed properly, and it's going to give you the most speed and it's going to be something that will work for you no matter what, which is why you see a lot of businesses using uh, ethernet cable inside of walls, for example. So where can you find an ethernet port? Well, um, you will find them, for example, in a keystone jack. So yeah, you're gonna find them in a keystone jack. And uh, as you can see, it looks like a wall port. And that wall port, is literally a place where you can plug in a patch cord and then plug in your computer or printer or something like that. Um, another place that you're gonna find an ethernet port is for example, like in a ethernet switch. Now, before I showed you a small switch, what about a big, much bigger switch? Like for example, in a telecommunications room. So this is a switch that is used for many different connections uh, out to many different places inside of a larger network. 
So that's two very big prime examples of where you'll find Ethernet ports. And then the back of your typical computer. So on the back of your typical computer, uh, assuming it's not, I mean, a lot of modern laptops these days are only coming with Wi-Fi. So you don't have your wired connections anymore on them, unfortunately. You can get dongles uh, that will allow you to go to USB to RJ45 for uh, Ethernet, which could be a way to solve a lot of your problems. But uh, on a desktop computer or a mini computer like this, Ethernet port, and this ends up connecting at, to a, you know, to maybe your wall, and then to your uh, switch, and then to the cable modem, and then out to the outside world on the internet. You know, or, or it could be a simple connection, just using a simple patch cord, you know, a direct connect like this. But I thought maybe it would make a whole lot of sense if you understood that Ethernet technology has been around for quite some time. That explains all these unexplainable jacks that you probably have seen around the house, maybe in a business and didn't quite understand what they were for. Maybe it's got some funny numbering and lettering. Well, that, that, that funny numbering and lettering you typically see in a business is so that the uh, IT person can identify which port it is because some these networks can get pretty large. So um, now that you know what the port is and what it's used for, I suggest you give it a try. Why don't you go ahead and identify an Ethernet port in your network and give a patch cord a try. For example, TrueCable sells an excellent Category 6 certified component rated patch cord that's ideal for giving this a shot. Get a dongle for your laptop, get off that Wi-Fi, and see how much better your connection really is. And with that, I'm going to say happy networking. Please do uh, subscribe to our channel, leave a like, uh, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Please leave a comment if you've got some experiences of your own and want to share, pass along your own knowledge. Uh, take issue with something I said, please leave a comment. We will respond to your comments. We always do. So jump in. Let's have a discussion. Thank you very much for watching the video. You may not be aware of it, but we also have extensive blogs at our Cable Academy, 200 plus and counting. And most of the videos that you actually see here on YouTube are in fact embedded in a blog, which is far more detailed in regards to photography and descriptions. So I strongly recommend you head over to our Cable Academy, truecable.com, and check it out.